that you see are the betel nut palms from the West Indies. Uh, so, uh, betel nuts is a, is a kind of a nut that the Asian women used to chew on. They used to get black teeth and very dark red lips from chewing on the betel nut uh, from the West Indies. A very uh, intoxicating nut that will get you very high. On the left hand side, we've got our mallard butts all sitting on the side right now. They were in the water in the last tour. Um, I guess they're taking a rest right now. Uh, the mallard does rule these ponds here. Uh, so Senator wanted to have red, white, and blue lilies out there. He has pink, white, and, and purple, or lavender, but you can't see them anyway because most of the time, well, you can see some of the lavenders in white today. They must have turned on the right side up, but sometimes they have them all turned the wrong side, and you can't see the blossoms. Um, the, um, the mallard ducks here inside these ponds here, we have E.S. catfish and tilapia, and also uh, there's koi and out in the middle pond. He, he has to stick to being patriotic back in his visitor center with his red overhead lights. On the left hand side, the uh, uh, bamboo here that you see is your edible bamboo. The green bamboo, it has holes running to it, so they use it for irrigation and building material. Now it's right there for the, if it's the young shoots that come up from the ground that you want to pick to take home for your supper. Uh, the, if you ate in a Chinese restaurant, any vegetable dish you would order would have bamboo shoot in it. And uh, we do have better Chinese restaurants here on the island because the Chinese were the third here on the island. And so the race is very strong and most of the uh, locals do have part Chinese. Uh, the, this he left natural looking for you on the left and the right. This grows thick and wild, dense through the whole windward side, the Howl trees. Uh, spelled H-A-U, pronounced like H-O-W, Howl. The Howl uh, wood was very important to the common and time to get permission, permission from the chief to use this Howl wood here. On the right hand side, the uh, ferns that you see out there are called the uh, Kupu Kupu fern, and it's a member of the Boston fern family. Now as we come up here on the left hand side, you'll see lots of these giant white gingers. Uh, I mean, excuse me, the giant white bird of paradise here on the left hand side. And if you'll notice uh, the way it grows right off from the heart of the plant, not like your orange that has a three foot stem. Uh, the, uh, this is why you don't see this used as often as you do the white, uh, I mean the orange bird of paradise. These are members of the uh, a tr traveler's tree. Uh, there's a sister uh, bird of a blossom to this or a tree to this plant. Uh, the traveler's tree I'll be showing you later on. The uh, members of the banana family. Uh, when the Hawaiians divided their land here on the windward side, they divided it into nine sections. They, call, they divided it from the mountains, going wider down to the ocean, so all the land could be utilized. And they called the land sections Ahu Pua'as. Ahu are the stones that they used to divide and mark their land. We call our pigs Pua'as. They put the pigs on the Ahu, on the stone markers. We were in the tax now would come around. And Senator Farms Ahu Pua'as is called Kala'aya. It goes from this left-hand side. We're going to go over to the right-hand side. It means the archer earth, and the archer earth means the they use this uh, red earth to make a fine clay like their clay like stone they made a fine red rock powder adding it to their white Hawaiian rock salt they have the red rock salt served to the royalty in the ancient days called the alai salt this is very high in iron mineral this red rock uh, red soil here on the red, right hand side the Ford plateau uh, this is the there are the Cook Island pines here introduced by Captain Cook when he first came to the Hawaiian Islands up front here on the turn is the Norfolk Island pine also introduced by Captain Cook, but coming from the island of Norfolk. As we make the turn here on the right hand side, up there are the uh, Blackfoot Pines, right up here on the right hand side. This is known as a hala here on the island, but it's also uh, known as a pandanus. Now the sailors gave it a name, a recorded name during the wartime, that's why it's here with the pines. It's called a scoop pine. They called it a scoop pine because of the way the leaves grow out in a spiral fashion, and we'll see more of the tops of the hala after a while. The uh, Hala was also, uh, it was recorded that the Japanese uh, hid their bodies and their ammunitions in the bottoms of these hala trees during the wartime. Uh, the more matured ones have all their legs uh, or their roots, let's say, growing up above the ground. Some people would used to call it, refer to it as the walking tree. Senator said he's never seen it walk anywhere in 20 years. Uh, the <laughs> hala tree here. Now there's a male hala and uh, the Polynesian women used to hide their fruits in there when they also use, that's uh, recorded also when they go on their long journeys across the mountain side. The uh, male, uh, their male plant has the uh, flowers and they use the flower as an aphrodisiac. Uh, they, uh, 
they said if uh, they made a talcum powder out of it, and they said for the woman who used the talcum powder, if she wanted to catch her mate, use the talcum powder from the hala, and um, uh, you would uh, a man would follow you to the ends of the earth. Uh, the uh, female has the fruit, and the fruit was eaten during time of famine. What I have over here, you can come up and look at and look at. Uh, they use the dry food for making paintbrushes in the ancient days to paint their kappa and their tapa with. Uh, shaving brush. Uh, the leaves, uh, the branches were used for making baskets, uh, mats. Uh, they made their pillows, something on with a hot food tree fur. They made their uh, fans. It's very important they made their sails for their kazoo. In the olden days, most of the tourists that came to the island always did take home Lao Hala items with them. Uh, when they uh, leave the island here, the souvenir shop, you can buy lots of items of Lao Hala. On the right hand side, you'll see the ocean. Over here, over to the left hand side, are the beautiful Ko'olaos. Senator owns from the ocean to the mountain side. Power. I thought you put for power earlier. Oh. Oh the mountain, 75 feet over the mountain side. If you follow the ridge lines all the way down to where the Twin Peaks are and there's the first bit of mountain in the back that's where his property runs to. This is nice because it cleared up. You can see the top of the mountain. On the last couple of tours you would uh, see uh, clouds here because the clouds were kind of down low. Where you see the uh, trails like coming down the valleys here the uh, that's where there, we get anywhere from 8 to 13 waterfalls that come down these mountain sides here. This is our winter time, actually, when we have more rainfall, heavier rainfall, and also you would see the uh, waterfalls down here on rainy days. On the right-hand side, this is the scotch pine here on the right-hand side. Um, the yellow blossoms that you see there are the... Uh, The yellow blossoms are the candlestick uh, blossoms there, and the uh, pretty green and yellow leaves out there is a tapioca plant, and uh, the Hawaiians use that root of the tapioca plant to help them with their fishing in the ancient days. You want to make sure you cook it, if you want to use it for the tapioca starches to make tapioca pudding, the root is much like a potato root. The red blossoms here on the left hand side, uh, or there's the red berries I should say, were used as a dye in the ancient days called the octopus tree, called the umbrella tree because of the way the leaves grow. It's also called a rubber tree and it's a member of the Brasaya family. This here is a hala, a male hala. It had lots of flowers there already uh, getting on the brown side. Uh, the shaped leaves here on the left hand side is a how. The how wood, or as I mentioned, very important to the Hawaiians. When this wood is cut and dry, it dries very, very hard. And then again, it is a very lightweight and buoyant wood. So they use it for all their construction, for their outriggers on their canoes, their fish floats and say, uh, uh, rafts and things. They uh, use it for medicine, the leaves. It has a yellow kind of a flower. Right now, uh, a little on the dormant side. They use the leaves, the juice from the bark, and the flower. Pounding it, they used to make a pulp and use it for medicine. Now, the uh, barks of these trees here, they made a cordage out of it, using it to carry their gourds and things for water. And uh, they, uh I had a nice sample for a while. It was like a, a nice handle with a whip uh, the end of it. was made from the hull. And uh, it's like a whip that they made their cordage. And they used these, uh, the cordage in place of nails for all their building. So uh, they had lots of use out of this hull wood. Now, if you're familiar with the uh, one yard of grass shafts and grass skirts, that's the grass that they use up there on the hillside, the brown hillside there. Pili grass, uh, spelled P as in fall, P-I-L-I. The pili grass was used to attach their grass shacks. Placing down the coconut leaf first and then attaching it around uh, the ribs of the uh, coconut uh, branches, putting the pili grass on it. The men use the pili grass to um, dance with in the ancient days. The women were forbidden to dance the hula in the ancient days. Only the men could dance, and they danced with the pili grass. Uh, these plums that you see out here in these trees, these are the java plums. The java plums uh, go wild to the windward side. I noticed the light-colored trees growing up in the valleys there. If you did notice, those light-colored trees are our saint tree, the kukui nut. Uh, here between these java plum trees, you'll see the top of the scoop pine there, or the hala. Uh, the bird out there with the red uh, feathers, uh, lots of people ask me. I only know that I was told that I was a Kentucky cardinal when I was little, but I'm not. It's a card and all. I'm not uh, absolutely sure because somebody else told me it's a different kind of a card and all. But I knew that as a Kentucky card and all. And uh, the uh, 
red, there's a brown headed one and a red headed one. And the uh, red headed one is the male and the brown headed one is the female. Uh, these here are tea plants on the left hand side. Now these aren't the best varieties, they're the younger ones. So I'll show you better ones later, bigger bunches. But just to give you a little history on the tea plant, this uh, plant here uh, was also brought by the Polynesians when they came to the Hawaiian Islands. They use it much the way we use tinfoil and saran wrap today. Of the ones I'll show you later have about big three foot leaves and you could uh, wrap anything in it. Also they made a drink from this tea plant. It was an alcoholic drink, uh, not a tea drink. Um, the uh, drink was called Okole Hau, the tea root drink, and it was bootlegged for a while, and then it was bottled later on. And if you drank too much of this drink, we would put you on your Okole, your ok what you're sitting on right now. Uh, your Okole is your bottom in Hawaiian. And uh, also, uh, you could put your bottom on the leaves uh, and cut the bottom stump and get the gig. Uh, I'll show you bigger bunches later on. That's the kind you want to use to go mountain sliding. It was a sport for the Hawaiians in the ancient days. Also, they uh, used it to signify divine spiritual power. The way our priests in Kahunas uh, wore uh, tea leaves is the way this cover girl is wearing her, their, her tea leaf around her neck. Uh, that's the way they used it to signify divine spiritual power. Commoners planted them in their yards to ward away the evil spirits in the ancient days. They made uh, sandals with them. Uh, it is a member of the Lily family. And today we uh, make the like tea leaf uh, rope blades. They use them for a basket by turning the leaves backwards and tying it on the stump, holding the stump like a bell. Uh, you have a bell-like shape and you're holding the stump as a handle. Uh, you had yourself a basket to carry your fruits down when you go up the mountainside and forget your basket. And you notice the sign here, this is a King Luna Little Heights. King Luna Little owned 1,340 acres of land here on the windward side. When the land was uh, in the 1800s, when the missionaries came, they uh, brought many plagues and diseases, and then the land, the Hawaiian side, from 17,000 population to 2,500. Go ahead and uh, feel free to stretch your legs out here. Uh, the um, I'll be glad to take any picture of you with your camera if you'd like. This is the Kaneohe Bay that you're overlooking here at the Kaneohe Marine Air Corps Station, straight out ahead. Okay, now it's on record. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the Kaneohe Marine uh, Air Corps Station in the background, and the Kaneohe Bay that you're overlooking here, stretching 23 miles long, was known as the Kaneohe Marine Air Corps Station in ancient days. Okay, I'm gonna catch you this side. All right. Okay. Yeah, you push it again this time. Oh, this brochure here by the tree here at the lookout overlooking the beautiful, peaceful Kaneohe Bay. And uh, as I mentioned, it stretches 23 miles long from the Kaneohe Marine Air Corps Station where you see the white caps starting out there. And then the white caps of the white waves go all the way back this side. That's where the reef encloses the whole bay area. And uh, it was known as the lagoon in the ancient days. It starts from way back there and all along the shoreline comes all the way around here. This was a fishing grounds for the Hawaiians where they had all their natural spring ponds all along the shoreline. Anytime they used to, this was a fishing grounds and anytime they used to fish, catch a lot of fish, they'd store it in their individual fish ponds that they had. So they always had fish readily available. Uh, the um, they had all their natural spring ponds here and uh, the waterfalls and everything on this side of the island. This is the reason why they all lived on this side of the island here. Uh, the visitor center is the blue roof that you see back down there. That's where we uh, started out. <laughs> this is about 350 feet above sea level that we came up to. And uh, the white house that you saw out there, down, that you saw out there is the... Uh, uh, Senator's number two son's house, uh, that white house out there. He doesn't live here on the property. Senator Fong lives up in town. Uh, he has a nice house up there. He comes out every day though and works on the plantation. 